I'd like to greet you all in the name of Jesus. And I just thank Jesus for bringing her all the way down to Oklahoma. But um, I really got a bad cold and I'm congested. But um, I'll just share a little that when um, she was two years old, she was diagnosed with um, leukemia, um, a childhood blood cancer. And from two to six, um, she never had a normal childhood. She spent her her baby years in the hospital. And her childhood, she was, you know, born and raised in a hospital setting. And she didn't get to be like other little kids and be normal and enjoy herself. But um, she, she, um, from two to six, she um, went into remission. At six years old, she went into a remission right after um, she went into a coma. And at six years old, um, she had MRSA also, but it turned into a um, sepsis, which is the whole body, you know, a viral infection in her body. And it caused her to go into a coma for eight days. And little did, you know, we know within that eight days that the Lord took her and he brought her to hell for two days and then the other day she got to spend in heaven and i didn't know this happened until um it was um we were reborn um september 24th 2010 that's when me and her got really sick and we went to church and we gave our lives to jesus because he healed us just like that and after that we you know we we just fell in love with him more and more and we went to church every Thursday and Sunday we never missed and um, up until um, May 15th 2011 it was a Sunday morning and it was right on Mother's it was like during Mother's Day um, we have a um, the nearest shopping center for us is like two hours away it's called Great Falls Montana and we went there um, we went shopping, and um, they wanted to get a, get me a Mother's Day gift. So I went to the Christian bookstore, and they bought me this book called Heaven is for Real. And that's what um, we got for I got for Mother's Day from her and Noah and Gus and my other son, Jalen. And it was a Sunday morning, May 15th. I was reading the book, and she came in, and she said, Mom, what you reading about? And I told her, I'm reading about a little boy who went to heaven, and he got to see Jesus and, you know, rainbows and angels. Everything he sees is really pretty. And she said, Mom, can you put the book down? And so I put it down. She said, do you believe that little boy? And I said, I believe, I believe his story with all my heart. I believe he saw Jesus. And she said, well, now it's my time to, it's my turn to share my story. And she started and she said early this morning two angels came after me and it was five o'clock in the morning and we went to the staircase and it went up into the sky she said I only got to go up to the third step and I seen the sky coming down and here he got closer and it was Jesus Christ the Son of God and he came down and he told me it was time to release my story now that I had to release my story and she you know she had she remembered parts of it but not all of it because he took it away from her and saved it for that time i guess and she started telling me the story he told her to go back and share her story so we sat there at the edge of my bed and she started telling me the story you know she started telling me that when she went into a coma um you know that um, she'll tell you guys her story but when she went into to the coma this is when this all took place and you know I really had a hard time believing her I was really being skeptical and I was like did this really happen to her and you know I couldn't I couldn't grasp that this really happened to her until at the end of her story when um, and only I know this because I was sitting by her hospital bed when she was in that coma and only I knew this um, this prayer. And at the end of her story, but I'll tell the part when she was in the coma in Seattle on the eighth day. The doctors came in and they told me that um, you know it was a touch and go situation. They didn't know what was going to happen with her. 
um, if she was going to wake up or not, or if she was going to remain in that coma. They weren't sure what was going to happen. And, you know, I sat by her bed and I start praying. I said, Jesus, if you're real, I said, um, if you're real, I said, take her because I don't want to see her suffer no more. I said, if you need her more than me, just take her. I said, because I don't want to see her laying in a bed like this. She's never had a normal childhood. She's suffered all these years, and I'm being selfish. So just take her if you need her. But deep in my heart, you know, I was crying out, don't take her. I said, and if you give her back, give me back a how you know a healthy, normal little girl that I'll get to see go to school and play around at the playgrounds and. You know, just be normal. You know, I want a normal little girl I can enjoy. And little did I know, you know, the prayer was answered. But, you know, and then when we're sitting at the edge of the bed, she said that Jesus told her she can come back or she can stay. And he opened up the clouds. And here she saw me sitting by her bed, say, and she recited that prayer back to me. And that's how I believed her. And she can tell you the rest of her story. God bless. I greet you all in the name of the Lord. Um, when I was when I was about six years old, I would wake up. I would wake up from bed every morning, and I would just go to the couch, and I wouldn't eat or drink, and I just slept. Finally, one morning, I remember being rushed to the hospital. And I come to, and I, I I remember being rushed to the hospital, and I remember seeing my my Papa Wilbert and my Grandma Lina, my Grandma Lois, my mom, and then my stepdad, Jill. And I turned around. I had tubes in my throat, and I seen the doctors shoving tubes in my throat, and I jumped off the bed and I went through the curtains. I went out into the waiting room. I seen my Papa David, my Grandma, my Great Grandma Emma. And I seen my Papa Chief. And I see the rest of my family. Finally, I heard one, two, three, flatline. I was back in my body. I come to when I woke up on a jet. I seen Mom. And I cried out for mom, but I couldn't talk because I had tubes in my throat. I cried, mom, and then I was like, mom. And then a nurse came and she put something into the IV. <laughs> Suddenly I woke up when I was in a dark, dark tunnel and I, I cried. I said, help me, help me, help me. And I, I cried for Jesus. I said, Jesus, I said, if you're real, help me. I said, help me, don't leave me. I said, please, please, somebody. I said, somebody, help. And I begged and begged, and I heard a woman behind me say, I'm hot, I'm hot. Suddenly, I turned around. She had no eyes. There was bugs crawling back and forth. And then she blamed the Lord for making her blind. I said, Jesus, Jesus, help me, help me. I said, please, please, help me. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I said, please. And next thing... I seen the light become, it got closer and closer, it got closer, and then it suddenly, it was Jesus, I began not to feel fear, I said, Lord, please take me, I said, I don't want to be here, I said, take me, I don't want to be here, I didn't mean to blame you, I said, please. I said, please don't let me be here. <laughs> he said, darling, you're not here for that. I said, then what am I here for? <laughs> he said, I'm showing you why people come here. He picked me up. <laughs> 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 
We stood in front of a tall door. There was a man. He began to drink. He began to tip the bottle. <laughs> worms and bugs were coming at her. A big fat worm and slithered down his throat. <laughs> and then fire becomes. He turned to the door. Lord, pain. Lord, pain. <laughs> pain. And I said, Jesus, so let me see this. I said, please. <laughs> I said, I don't want to see this. Please, please. <laughs> Suddenly, we went in front of another tolter. Before we went to the tolter, he told us, Oh, no. He says, You choose that before me. You should have known me. Every room we went to, Jesus told the souls that he couldn't have saved him because they're choosing that before him. Suddenly, we went to another tall door. There was a man, he was smoking, he began to smoke. Bugs were crawling at him when he was smoking up and suddenly tightly around his lungs squeezed. <laughs> he turned to the door, Lord, help, Lord, save me, save me, please, help me. <laughs> Jesus told the souls, like I said, I'm in room we went to, Jesus told the soul we couldn't have And Jesus said, you choose a dot before me. You should have known me. You should have known me. And next thing we went into another tall door. He said, this is a club. Many people dance to hard rock music. Never stop. If they stop, they got tormented. And then the soul quit dancing. He got put into the cage. He got put into the cage, <laughs> and he began to be speared and speared. <laughs> he began to turn to the door, Lord, help me, Lord, save me, save me. <laughs> and Jesus said, all I can do is pray for you. And this will begin to cry, cry, <laughs> and cry. And I don't, I encourage you people. <laughs> it's not fun being down there. It's hard. It's miserable. It's the misery of your life. <laughs> it's so hot and it was so miserable seeing all the souls get tormented. <laughs> you don't want to go there. You don't want to be there. <laughs> it's miserable. It's miserable. <laughs> You're miserable. You're miserable. You're, you're, you're always tormented, no stop, no break, <laughs> no break, no break for the souls, poor souls, <laughs> poor souls have to be tormented every day, <laughs> and we have a chance, we have a chance not to go there. <laughs> We have a chance, poor souls. Poor souls are being tormented every minute. <laughs> every second. <laughs> They're in miserableness. They're not happy where they are. <laughs> it is so hot. <laughs> it's like standing by a fire, but more steep. <laughs> more Miserableness. More miserable. You're miserable down there. You're not happy. You're not by people that are laughing and in a and has joy. You're here in pain and sorrow. It's all about sorrow. They're, they're in pain. They're in pain. They're in agony. They're not happy. They're not happy where they are. And it's, it's 
place to take me out. It's a darling restaurant in peace. I begin to rest in peace. I begin to wake up all green, green grass. I smell the sweet, sweet flowers. I begin to walk, sat up, and the angel came. He said, don't be afraid. This is our Lord. This is our Lord Jesus. I grabbed a man's hand. We began to walk the path. We came upon this place where his mom was crying. <laughs> I said, Jesus, why's your mom crying? She can't save. She can't save. Only I can. She said she didn't, she didn't save. She can't save. She said, I'm the one who died on the cross. I'm the one who sacrificed my life. He said, only I can save. I said, oh, we begin to walk the path. We came into a room of worshiping angels. A lot of voices. A loud music, and they were singing out, that's like David dance. And David was dancing before the Lord. We began to step into the room. He said, darling, pray. We began to pray. A loud voice of thunder began to say, keep it up, my son. You're doing a good job, my son. Jesus, yes, Father, I love you, Father. Have mercy on us, Father. <coughs> The louder the voice got, the louder the angel sang. <laughs> it was so anointed and powerful. I couldn't help but drop to my knees and cry. And after the room, after we went to worship in the song, we laughed. We came into a room with the babies. Adam and the John and the Noah and the Anna. <laughs> I said, who's Noah? He brought me to Noah. He picked up Noah. Noah was giggling and laughing in my arms. <laughs> I began to laugh back and I began to fall in love with Noah. Jesus said, which one makes you happy? I looked at Anna. I looked at Noah. I said, Noah, because Noah, the moment I was holding Noah, Noah was giggling and laughing in my arms. He was the most happiest thing I ever had. And it was the most beautiful moment that I got to choose a baby right out of the heaven's doors. I didn't want to leave, but we left. He said, what did you always want it to be? I said, I thought about it. And at two years old, my mommy brought me to the zoo. And I got mad to watch the penguins. And I thought about that moment. I said, penguin? Poof, I got to be a penguin. <laughs> and I was, I got changed back. Only, I got to be a penguin only for a moment. I got changed back. <laughs> Next thing he said, go play. I went to play. There was a girl with numbers on her necks. I said, why does she have numbers on her necks? Mommy didn't want her. Mommy aborted her. Mommy wanted to drink and have that fast stuff and do that fast up, have her fun. He says, so she's my darling. I looked at Jesus. He said, go play. I went to swing. I was swinging. I found a flitter on my back. <coughs> I turned around. I had wings. He said, my darling, you look beautiful. My darling, you look like a butterfly. I giggled and I tickled. <laughs> He said, come with me. We went to a big, huge Bible. We turned, it was so, so, so huge. It took so many of us little children to turn that Bible. We read John 123. It's talking about uh, the prophet Isaiah. And it says, <laughs> and it's talking about he's going out into the wilderness. One cried out in the wilderness. And he, he makes straight for the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, we read the page. And Jesus said, you can go home or you can stay with me. And I looked up at Jesus in a cloud appeared. Mommy was sitting by my bed crying, holding my hand. She told Jesus if he needed me more than he 
<laughs> that he could take me, but if he was going to give me back, to give me back a strong, healthy girl to go to school and stuff. I looked up at Jesus. I said, I'll go back. I don't want to make mom cry. He said, you promised me. I said, well, he said, promise me you go back and tell the people. Go back and tell my people I'm coming back. He said, go back and tell the people my story. He said to tell people to have faith in me, to tell the people to believe in me. And whatever they need, they shall receive just to call on me. He said, open your hands. I opened my hands. There was light bouncing back and forth. He says, I'm, he says, you're going to go back and lay hands on people. And I work through you. He says, I work through you. He says, just tell them to believe that they can, they can receive me in your clothes and stuff like that. And he says, he says, remember, he said, this saying a dream. Remember this saying a dream. And I woke up when I smelled awful, awful medicine and all those stuff. In the end. That was my experience to have hell in heaven. <laughs> and I encourage you all to believe in the Lord. Because he's everything. He's everything. He can heal you just like that. <laughs> he can heal you just like that. Because <laughs> I was healed of blood cancer. I was healed of a sickness. I was healed of diabetes. <laughs> I was healed by the Lord. By his stripes and by his blood. <laughs> <clears throat> I was healed just like that. And it's no joke. It's no joke. This was real. <clears throat> many of you can doubt. And many of you can believe. <clears throat> but Jesus will see those who follow him. <clears throat> he sent me back with the message. And it's not hard carrying this message. It is hard. <laughs> it is hard. It is hard carrying a message <laughs> for the Lord. Right from out of His kingdom. <laughs> right from the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> right out of the gates of heaven. <laughs> And this, this story healed many people. Many people. The first time I came here, I couldn't believe how much healing took place. By the Lord, not mine. <laughs> so many healings took place. And it's up to you to believe it or not. I'm not telling you you have to. It's up to you. And it's up to you to receive that miracle. Because I try and there's many disbeliefs out there. People call me a fool. I don't care if I get called a fool. I don't care if I look like a joke. I don't care. As long as I get this message out for the Lord. That's all it comes. Who cares what people think about me? If I'm a fool, if I'm a, if I'm a liar, if I'm just making this up, who cares? I don't care if I get called a fool. As long as I know that, well, I know, and as long as I know the Lord's got me. And the Lord's with me. He's with me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. <laughs> He lives in me. <laughs> but it's up to you guys.
guys if you want to believe. Because <laughs> there's many disbeliefs out there. <laughs> and if you need prayers, I'm more than happy to pray for you. But remember, it's not my glory. It's Jesus's. <laughs> he works through me. <laughs> but if you just believe, you can receive a miracle just like that. <laughs> but that's all I have tonight. <laughs> but before I before I remove myself from the from this. I just want to encourage you all. <laughs> share this. Share this. You're welcome to share with your family. <laughs> because the, he's not only stepping up me. He's stepping up others. <laughs> and you're welcome to share with your family. Because we're saving souls together with the Lord. <laughs> to make it to his kingdom. Because we don't want to end in hell. We don't want to be there for eternally. <laughs> we don't want to be there just for rejecting the Lord. Because <laughs> Jesus is everything. He died on that cross for us. He died on that cross for us, people. <laughs> he loved us so much. <laughs> He was nailed to a cross. No other man or no other woman will be nailed to a cross because they loved their people that much. But Jesus did. If God said His only begotten Son and that's Jesus Christ, if Jesus Christ is coming back one day for us and we need to be ready for Him because He's not coming back after a church that's just going to be be silent treatment. We gotta be out. We gotta be, we gotta be alive for the Lord. We gotta be alive for Him. We gotta give Him all we got. Cause He's not gonna come back for us. He's, a, he, when He comes back, He'll be like, children, where's your excitement for me? Like when He comes, I'll be Messiah, Messiah. The Lord has came for me. I'll be shouting for joy. I'll be cheering for joy. Because he had come back for me. I'll be cheering. I'll be I'll be singing if I had to. We gotta we gotta be alive, people. Are we children of God? Will they be alive for him? Because he's not going to come back for uh, something that's not going to be alive. <laughs> he's our king of kings. He's our lord of lords. He's coming back. He's coming back for us. <laughs> and we got to know. <laughs> it's It may not be tomorrow, the next day, but he's coming soon. He's coming soon. If we don't want to be left behind. No. No. I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be left behind. I want the Lord. When he comes, I want him to take me right there and then. I don't want to be left behind because I don't want to miss out on a kingdom of glory. A kingdom that's full of love and joy that you never imagined on earth. <laughs> Who would want to miss out on that? Not me. Not me. So be alive for him. If you don't go to church... Start stepping in church. Find the church. And glorify the Lord. Because <laughs> he's there for us. And that's what he wants. <laughs> but that's all I have. And God bless you. But if you need prayer, I'm happy to pray for you. <laughs>